break, we asked when the first electronic cigarette was invented. And the answer is A, 1963. Hello there, we have Sam and Gemma and James with us and our stories of the day are coming. Find out which site is getting a tourism boost thanks to a new TV show, you'll be very surprised. But first, is it time for vaping to face far greater controls? We'll talk about that. Actually, I tell you what, we've got a brilliant bit of Boris Johnson I must, I must remember to show you before we do that. So, so this is just from the party conference. He's handed the cup of coffee. The other aide takes it straight away. No. <laughs> and she says no disposable cups. There we are. The, uh, the new that series. Is... The new series of the thick of it looks great. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay, vaping and controls. E-cigarettes are promoted as a way to get off the regular cigarettes, which are the biggest cause of preventable death in the UK. 120,000 people every year from the regular cigs. Over three million now vape. That's gone up 12% in one year. So it's really catching on. Yes, they contain addictive nicotine, but none of the tar. Now, are officials downplaying the risks because they're so desperate? Look at this guy here who's walking along the street. I don't know who this is. <laughs> walking past ITN, actually. <laughs> is that one of ours? Oh, yeah. That looks like it could be Joe. <laughs> He's got a lot of smoke in there. <laughs> now that, but that's, that's part of the side issue, is that people don't like being covered in clouds of smoke. The Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Agency links vaping to over 100 illnesses, including heart disease. They can't advertise on TV or in newspapers, but vapors can still run ads on billboards and in social media where they are accused of targeting young people, particularly with flavoured vapes. So has the UK also seen its first vape death? This is Terry Miller from Gateshead, who passed away in 2010 from something called lipoid pneumonia, with a post-mortem finding that oil from his e-cigarette was in his lungs. Now, let's talk to John Dunn here, who represents the vaping industry. What's your official title, John? Um, I'm director of the UK Vaping Industry Association. And you've got an important point about Mr Miller. Well, first of all, that was 10 years ago. That was prior to uh, the regulation that came into place here um, in the UK called the Tobacco Products Directive. So we've seen a lot of innovation and a lot of change in both the devices and the liquids that are being used. So he had oil in his lungs. You don't think that's an issue now? Well, if you look at the, if you look at the inquest itself, it was open. So there was no direct link to uh, the cause of him vaping. The gentleman smoked for many, many years. Um, so that could be related to many different things. One of the things that we've seen at the moment in the press, there was reports that there was seven, uh, 200 um, uh, uh, reports of um, health effects related to vaping. Yes. But that's actually only 74. But this is a, you've got to understand this is a self-reporting mechanism. Understood, but I guess the thing is that <clears throat> we all sort of feel this is new and people are doing something that they're addicted to because the nicotine is addictive and we just don't know. It doesn't feel like it's safe. It feels like in 10 years we're going to find out something. Well, what we do know is that smoking will kill you. Yes, that's so true. What, yeah. we, what, we, what we're saying is it's not 100% safe. So, we, yes, we need to look at the long-term effects here. Right. But what we do know, and Public Health England um, um, will reiterate this, that it's at least 95% less harmful for you than smoking. OK. That's the important message to look at here. Yes. So it's about harm reduction here. Yeah, but it might be that people are vaping when they wouldn't have smoked otherwise. Do you don't vape, Storm, do you? I don't vape. I've never smoked, never vaped. It's not really... It doesn't suit me. No. OK, <laughs> no. anyone here vape? Who's a vapor? Ellen at the back is a vapor. We've got you, Sandy you here. Are? Oh, yes. Yeah. Go on, tell us why you do it. Why I do it? Well, first of all, to stop me from smoking. Um, and I do it... Um, now and then, especially when there's a blip, you know, I feel stressful or something, and I would rather do that than pick up a cigarette. Um, but it interests me as to what other regulations or restrictions they can. We're already treated like smokers. I have to go outside and smoke, standing there using my vape with people billowing smoke at me, which, you know, it's not a healthy thing either. So even maybe separate places for vapors and smokers might be better. I do, but the, the stuff that comes out of your mouth when you're vaping, what is that? Is that steam? As far as I'm concerned, it's vapor. I mean... Water vapor? Water vapor, yeah. Flavoured water vapor? Yeah. Desmond says no. It's oil-based. It's oil-based. Glycerol and glycol, they're, they're alcohols. OK, but so why not let people vape in buildings? Is that what you want then? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, well, I OK. Mean, I, I think it would be fair to say it's OK to smoke inside, okay. without vape inside. But do we know if there's any nicotine in the vapour that people blow out? Because there's a huge amount of steam or smoke that comes out when people vape. Well, that's, that's, what, you, that's what you notice. Um, but if you look at the smaller devices such right. as these, yeah. 
these don't create an awful lot of vapour. Yeah, no. um, we call that? them discrete I've vaping. I've never seen one. Well, yeah. these, these, are, these, are, these are what we call pod devices. So they're pre-filled device cartridges and they just slip on a battery and, and you vape. So the one you have on your desk is, is quite a large device. Yeah. Um, so this is what the majority of people are using. And you, you wouldn't really notice this being used at all. Do you worry that young people are basically using vaping as an entry to nicotine addiction and they're moving to cigarettes? No, there's absolutely no evidence of that. And the UK does an awful lot of research on that. Ash just brought out their latest numbers and what they've, they've seen is 1.6% of young people vape. But the majority of those were smoking prior to vaping. So they're doing something that's better They're for going them. the other way. And one of the questions they asked young people was, do you think vaping is cool? And only 1% of the young people thought it was cool. Yeah. So that's, no, really, that's cool. really the different message that we're giving here in the UK okay. versus the rest it's of the world. It's not got... cool, but I think we, we're making them look swisher and swisher. I think they should look like terrible and really uncool. What, like a tennis ball or like something? A, I don't know. I, I don't know what you could make it. Like a block, like a fish. It will children from doing. Make it like a carrot or something, because kids don't like carrots or any form of vegetable. That's brilliant. So make it like that. So well, shape it like broccoli. Well, I think, I, think we're doing a very, I think we're doing a very good job of it, because no young, very few young people are actually taking it up in this country. What we're doing is that we're making it simple for, for, for people like your guest there to use. It's just right. it's a simple device. Storm, have you got any messages? Lots of messages coming in on this. So Mark says, I wish we would stop being told vaping is to help people get off cigarettes. It's a replacement, Mark says. They are still getting the nicotine, but from vapour instead of smoke. But Steve says, I'm so sick of people hating on vaping and vapours is the only thing that stopped me smoking. And finally here, Sam writes, just been to drop off my son at school and someone's dad was sat there vaping away, blowing it right in the direction of the kids. Disgusting. So I've got one of the these vape the vapes here. I've never done one myself. Sam, have you ever done it? I have, yeah. And you know, I, I struggle with anxiety and I, I kind of tried it for a didn't really work very well. It made my lungs quite crackly. Um maybe I was doing it wrong. Um but <laughs> you I take it right deep, deep yeah, down. Yeah, you know, but I've only got fifty percent lung capacity, so probably not the best thing for mm. me to do. Um but I have seen a lot more signs going up when it says no smoking. And vaping no, they don't. Yes, up. absolutely. Um, but it's banned. It, it, they started banning it from everywhere that smoking is banned from. But they, you, you support that, James? Well, I think the point about it is, I tried vaping for a little while. I gave up smoking because I thought, well, you know, this is the alternative, and maybe it is a sort of gateway to giving up. Mm -hmm. There were things that I felt I felt uncomfortable about it. I felt like you. I felt that my lungs were a bit like they dried out. My throat mm -hmm. dried out, and I felt a bit grotty, and I, I didn't really like it. So I, I kind of. Uh, thankfully, I gave up smoking and actually I feel a whole ton better not doing any of this stuff. What I think is, even if the stats are right, so, OK, so if it's less damaging, less harmful than smoking, that's great. We've got to have a lot more research done. So instead of hiding behind and just saying, here it is, NHS, here it is, you know, we must do it. What we have to do is have better information so that people can make informed choices. John, you want to come Everything back on that? Everything we do is, is, he is wrong? dangerous. I, th I think you're perfectly right. We do need to look at it and the UK does look at it every single year. Um, and they came out last week and said they're quite happy to stand by their stats. Um, this is an emerging technology and it's not for everybody. Um, and sometimes people need a little bit of help to get the right device and the right mix of liquids. But this is much, much better for you than smoking. Yes, but we have important. to, but when you're talking about children and you're talking about children who might take this up, as a new habit, as opposed to those who are coming off smoking. So yes, it's less damaging than smoking, then that's probably a good thing. But if you've got children who are taking it up for the first time, we must have better information. Okay, information storm has calls, storm has calls. Yeah, lots of calls coming in. So we're going to speak to Ian from North Ayrshire first, who thinks e-cigarettes shouldn't be sold. Oh, right, ban them, Ian. Storm has calls. Yeah, lots of calls coming in. So we're going to speak to Ian from North Ayrshire. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Another call. And we're going to speak to Linda now from Leicestershire, uh, who says e-cigarettes helped her stop smoking, um, and she's concerned. She's concerned about vapes. Ah, so you, what, you're, you're concerned about them? Yes, I am. I think there should be greater restrictions on vapes. But they help you stop smoking, Linda. Yes, but we, we're not sure what's in them. I mean, it was the National Health Service Leicestershire Stop Smoking Service that issued me with it. Uh -huh, but, but I don't know what's in it. Yeah, but if it helped you stop smoking, it doesn't matter what... It, it, could have, it could have pureed bananas in it. It doesn't matter, does it? It helped you stop smoking. But how do we know in a few years down the line we're going to say that it's bad as smoking? Good point. Are you still vaping, Linda, or not? 
I am. I'm still vaping. So, do you feel you're a bit addicted to it? Um, I wouldn't say addicted, but it's nice. habit forming. Yeah. Habit forming, mm. dependent, is, maybe. Yeah, Linda. Thank you. It's very new, isn't it? Sort of relatively speaking. I know they've been around for some years. My, my only sort of real concern, because I think it's great for smokers if it's safer. But it is the young people thing and the fact that some of them are flavoured and all of that. I think when I was a kid, that would have been quite appealing. So I just think maybe there needs to be more... Um... Yeah, local school where, in my neighbourhood, they've got a sudden outbreak of something called duelling among the pupils. And I said to one of my kids, what's that? And it's where... It, it, duel, I think, is a type of vape. Yes. And it's a, quite, a, quite a lot of firepower in there. Yes, and I'm it's the going big through thing. this as well. I hear Are you? And it makes me feel old. I used to be <laughs> that kid breaking the rules. I'm like, dueling, what is this? Dueling, what is dueling? <laughs> yes. yeah. So dueling is a particular kind of vape thing. Storm. Well, we've got time for just a really quick call here from David from Nottinghamshire who thinks e-cigarettes are actually the best way to stop smoking. Right, well, go on, you stick up for them, David. Because I, I, I don't mind if the people smoke in the, every single building. I wouldn't, it wouldn't worry me at all. It, vaping, I mean. Don't you tell us why you, you think uh, they're a good way to stop smoking. Vaping is the most successful way to stop smoking. It's stopped nearly three and a half million people smoking so far. It will carry on expanding that through to the full 15 million smokers. It will get rid of it and it will save, have the greatest impact upon public health this century. It will reduce lung cancer by 90%. It will reduce all cancers by 30%. OK. Everyone will be healthier and better off. Right, so you would allow it everywhere because it's so good? Because it does no harm. Yeah. OK, David, thank you. That's a, he's a fan of... A he's a vape fan. He's a vape fan, yeah. yes. Thank you, John, for coming in. Appreciate it very much. Um, thanks to all our callers. After the break, stories of the day. So stay here for that. Cheers. <laughs>